Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PJ's cast. For the first time ever, we have a professional hockey player on and a Olympic silver medalist and gold medalist winner. Welcome to the show, Melody Deo. How is it going, Melody? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you on. I've been looking forward to this all week. It's been super busy for me with moving houses and whatnot, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you on. And uh, you've been, obviously, uh, the world has been impacted by COVID if for the past almost year now and I just want to know what you've been doing to stay sane have you picked up on any new activities whether that be like watching tv shows or reading books or podcasts or even like I don't know playing like a musical instrument any of that uh I would say at the beginning of the pandemic uh I was pretty busy I have a, a little guy uh he's two and a half so uh, daycare was closed so I spent at least a good two months with him um every day so I think that was the best part of it. I got to bond with him and um, that was a precious moment for me to just spend quality time with my family. And um, I think that's what I look the, for the most uh, during that time. Yeah, definitely. I have to agree with that. It's definitely been a rough time this past almost year, but what it, what it, this whole pandemic has made you realize how many, like how great your family and close ones are to be with and how important they are to you. So. Yeah. I want to set the scene. So this is 2014 in Sochi, the gold medal game. I, be, I, be, I think you already know where I'm going with this, but a minute and a half left. You're trailing one to the U.S. The puck trickles down the ice, hits the post. What is going through your mind when that happened? Uh, basically, I kind of thought we were in a movie. Um, <laughs> I was on the bench, and I'll remember for the rest of my life that puck that left the blue line and went all the way to the post. It looked like... I don't know, like a 10 minute period of time where it was yeah. probably just like seconds. Like slow motion. And yeah, it was <laughs> slow motion. And when it did hit the post, I think that's where we knew we were going to win because we wow. had that feeling that this could not happen and not coming back. So I think um, for us, we all looked at each other on the bench and we kind of say like, this is incredible. What just happened? Let's get that puck back in the zone and let's get a goal and that's what happened yeah i, I don't mean to trigger your pstd uh, ptsd reagan because you're american and i'm the canadian here but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah so what like you tied the game and you what was it like in the locker room after you tied the game and sent it to overtime it was so calm like i never seen that it was really calm everyone looked like in control of their emotion and we were there to win the gold medal and it was we were there also to play hockey which we have done our entire life and that's important you don't want to change much um and i'll remember uh, i remember when kevin denin was our coach at the time and he just got in the in the locker room we looked around and was like you girls know what to do so go out there and get it done and he left and i think that was the entire uh speech so i think just the girls the leadership group kind of stepped up and they looked like they had it um in their hand and they looked confident so i think that the entire team just um kept rolling with that vibe and um, we got on the ice we knew the Americans were playing on their heels because we just caught them back and for us to come back um, like that was I don't know magical like you, you want to um, write a book and you're gonna say that the fairy tale is just you can't you can't do it but um, it actually happened and it was an amazing feeling to come back to Canada with the gold medal. Yeah, so playing with Canada and uh, play, winning Olympic gold medal, what was it like being in that locker room with some Canadian hockey legends like Haley Wickenizer, who's played for forever, it seems like, and then playing with someone like Marie Philippe Lan, who is actually fairly young, but before in 2010, she was also got uh, the two goals in the gold medal game. So what was it like playing with those, uh, those other players? Yeah, I think you can learn so much from them, uh, whether it's in practice, off the ice, uh, during a game, during a, an Olympic game, like those are the kind of quality you're looking around the room to like gasp, grasp from 
um, all of your teammates. And I think just the way that those players carry themselves, like um, I remember Jenna Efford, I don't think she had one bad game during the entire year. Like she just are, was so consistent um, across the board. And I think those are the little things that you want to take with you as a younger player. I was the youngest one on the team in 2014. Wow. So Um, I was just looking around the room and I was happy to be there, but I, I also knew I had to get a, the, the job done. So um, it was incredible. Yeah. What did you guys do to celebrate after you won the gold medal? What do you think? <laughs> Drink. <laughs> We had lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know, there's so many good stories, but um, there was one that, will stay with me for a long time it's just like you go outside of of the rink and all the canadian flags and all the canadian athletes and families are there and they welcome you with open arms and it's it was just incredible like it's just a memory that you can't really just hear about it you need to like feel it and at that time it was just amazing I remember, oh, sorry, you go, Reagan. <laughs> uh, what, what was it like to just be able to go to the Olympics in general? Like not even just like winning a medal, but just like the whole like Olympic experience. Yeah, I think when you get name on that team, because we got, we need to be centralized for seven months prior to the Olympics for the coaches to choose the team. So we were 28 and then we went down to 23 players. And when that day, right before Christmas on December 22nd, when you get t- told that you're going to the Olympics like this is kind of a reality check it's like is that really happening like this is my dream since I'm five years old like and you get there and then I, I'll remember it's so simple but when you land at the Olympics you get your accreditation with your name on it your sports and it says Olympian and that felt like I don't know, like a driving, driving lessons that like, you're <laughs> going to have for the rest of your life. And this is something that no matter how long um, I stay here, like I'm always going to be an Olympian. So I think this is something very special because it's not everyone that can get there. Um, and I think it's I'm just proud to be able to represent Canada um, playing hockey. Yeah, that's awesome. Because like when we when you look at the Summer Olympics, it seems like Canada can never like kind of make their way up there. But when you look at the Winter Olympics, it seems like we're always up there. So it's always special to when it's the, when the Winter Olympics come around. I remember 2010 in Vancouver um, when they won against the U.S. in the gold medal game. They I remember the women on the ice drinking Molson Canadians. And I just remember that being so cool. And I always remember that. And it's so awesome. And um You also got to play in the 2018 Olympics. And what was that like? Unfortunately, you lost to the Americans in a shootout. But what was it like? Have you ever, have you gone back to kind of like watch highlights of the game of that? Or how do you feel about that game? Like, um, Yeah, that's the other side of the medal. That's for sure. Um, I'm still to this day not able to say that I won silver. Um, I'm still saying that I got silver. And I think that's, just how it is here in Canada we put that pressure on us and it's a good pressure we want to come back with the gold medal and that's our expectation as a team as an organization as a country and I think for us um, in Pyeongchang it was it was sad to lose that way uh, obviously in a shootout would you ever see two NHL teams go for the the cup and that it ends in a shootout not sure they would like that so no. I think that that's something that I kind of regret in a sense but it's part of the game at the end of the day you you need one winning team and um, they got on top and I still have it on my heart and I can't wait to go back and play in 2022 that's that's what I like to hear and I was uh, that's a perfect <laughs> transition to it so 2022 is that on your mind right now winning gold in the 2022 Olympics Yeah, for sure. Um, we're, as a team, we're focusing right now on hearing back from IIHF uh, to know when our 
worlds are going to happen. Uh, it's been a while since last time we competed. So that's going to be very interesting, but it's a process of going from worlds to centralization to the Olympics. And hopefully I made the team again and I get the chance to, to wear the Maple Leaf on my Jersey, uh, for my third Olympics, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so how did you fall in love with hockey? Like, how did you start playing it? Um, what, hmm. what, like, were you born into a family that was, that was, that, that just loved hockey or how, how did, I, how did you fall in love with the game of hockey? Yeah. You go back about like 20 years, there weren't that many girls playing hockey. Uh, anyway, in my hometown, we were only two girls playing hockey. So uh, it wasn't common and my dad and my brother did play hockey so I was in the stands to most of their game with my mom watching them and um, I started playing outside with my cousin and my best friend and my brother um, and we would just like play outside all day and at one point I told my mom and my dad I want to play hockey and they were like no, you're in figure skating. Like <laughs> there's no girls that plays hockey. What are you talking about? And I just had that dream that I wanted to be playing hockey. And um, they kind of went with it. They saw that I was loving it. I could spend probably nine hours a day uh, on the outdoor rink. And my dad would have to drive to the outside, the outdoor rink to come and get me for dinner. And I didn't want to go back home. So like, they knew I had that passion for the game uh, from such a young age. So it was kind of easy for them to understand that I like the game so much. And uh, since then, uh, that's what it is driving me to be better every day on and off the ice is that I love the game so much. That's so great to hear because on like for the past 20 years, like, like you brought up, like only in the past 20 years have women kind of started p playing hockey and we've seen a lot of unfortunate bumps in the road, but we've also seen some progress, like the yeah. NWHL being sponsored. And we, I remember tuning into one of the Twitch games and they had 35,000 viewers, which was just so crazy to me. And I'm, I'm confident going forward that women's hockey, it can be a thing where everyone will watch and that women can be paid for it. Because if I believe if you have that passion, like you do, and you work at it your whole life, that should be something you should be able to do going forward. And it's just awesome to hear that. And um, yeah, so, or you can, do you have a question to ask? Yeah, so like last year you guys had like the opportunity to like play at the NHL All-Star Games. Like what was that experience like? That was amazing too. Um, it's probably my top three events um, that I've done in hockey. So obviously the two Olympics and then the NHL All-Star. Um, like you said, hockey is not at the point where we're treated professionally yet. Um, but during that weekend last year in St. Louis, um, we were like queens. We landed. <laughs> um, there was some drivers waiting for us. That never happened to us. Uh, you get to the hotel, they take your luggage. You're like, are you okay? Like, do you want me to help you? And they're like, no, no, no. We're going to come up with you and put it at your door. Like, those are the little things that make you feel more professional. And I, I guess, like, they took care of us. Um, the entire event was amazing. We got to be on the ice uh, with the boys during some of the, the events. Uh, the guys watching, it's the best guys in the NHL. They were watching our three-on-three -three game. So that was also pretty cool to, to be a part of. And I think just the event in general, like the organization was um, very good to us. So, yeah, it, it was a great game and we won too. So that make it even better. <laughs> um I have to ask you what it like I'm not gonna ask you like what your like who your favorite person is but like I'm gonna ask you like kind of superlatives like what do you think is the funniest player to deal with like in the team Canada locker room on our team yeah oh good question it depends what you like um I would say we got two amazing singers on their team so Spooner <laughs> and Gable yeah um so they could run the show for karaoke night that's for sure <laughs> that's awesome um yeah, we don't want to keep you too long melody so um we're just going to ask you a couple of lightning round questions here yeah. um so what are some of your favorite tv shows of all time i'm watching a lot of 
French TV show, to be yeah. honest with you. Uh, English TV show. I think I, I have to go with The Bachelor or Bachelorette. Yeah. Um, how about uh, some of your favorite bands, artists, slash albums, or any of that? Um, I love Tones and I and Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran? Uh, mm-hmm. um, what are some of your favorite movies of all time? Mm, slap shot. Slap shot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy one. Um, or I really like also My Sister Keeper, depending my... on what moon you want. Hockey or kind of sad. <laughs> um, what, are your, have you, what are some of your favorite books of all time? Um, not a big reader, but actually I'm reading this book right now, How Champions Think. And it's actually like a a really good book that I enjoy. It's about like how you can be a better leader. And I like that part of it. All right. So this is the most important hard hitting question of the podcast. Do you think pineapples belong on pizza? No. (laughs) Oh, no. I (laughs) know. Sorry if you guys like it. Oh, no, no, no. We're I'm I'm of the mind of pizza's pizza. Like I'm not a pineapple pizza person, but if it's there and it's the only pizza, I'll 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 suck it up and eat it. But I'm with you. I'm I'm not uh pineapples on pizza. Yeah, pineapple I'm a big fan of pineapple, but probably not on breakfast. (laughs) Yeah, breakfast. I'm a big pineapple fan in general. And then you put it on pizza, I'm like, it just doesn't go together. No, the tastes are not right. What is your favorite pizza? Oh, I'm pretty simple. Either like a pepperoni oh, and yeah. cheese. Um, that's the to go, right? But yeah. if I want to be a little bit more fancy, you throw in some arugula and Parmesan cheese on there and a little sausage, the little, um, the little crumbs of sausage yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. It was so awesome having you on, Melody. We've never, we've had on many guests from across like the sport of hockey, like mm-hmm. journalists and stuff, but we've never had on a professional hockey player, uh, Olympic gold medalist and silver medalist. It was such an honor having you on. And uh, hopefully we can see the Olympics next year because it's always great to see you guys play. And uh, yeah. go Canada, go. Hopefully we can take yeah. it home again next year. Sorry, Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you so much. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you on. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. Bye.